Welcome to another podcast episode. Today, we are joined by Ashley Horn, a pioneer in sustainable living. In 2018, Ashley discovered the world of passive house design, setting her on a journey to craft two remarkable hempcrete, solar passive, off-grid houses. We'll explore her commitment to minimizing carbon footprint, creating passive thermal comfort, and fostering resilience. Join us as Ashley shares her insights and the transformative power of sustainable design. Okay, guys, so today we're actually talking to Ashley Horn from Wingham, um, and Ashley's going to share our She's going to share her off-grid story and tell us all about um, why she went off-grid. So, Ashley, tell us a bit about yourself. Yeah. So, uh, my husband and I bought our farm, The Simple Batch, about four years ago. It was the back of an old dairy farm, their back paddock. So, it's 45 acres here. It's only 10 minutes away from town, so we're not too far from Wingham, which isn't a huge town, but it's got all the essentials we need um and we started to look at buildings so building for us was really important that we were being mindful of what materials we were using because a lot of emissions go into building houses so we wanted to try and reduce that and use natural materials wherever we could we came across hempcrete which has got really good insulation it's got thermal mass and it's also fire resistant, which being in an area that seemed to be fire prone was a really important quality for us. No, definitely. Yeah, um, so um, we knew we wanted to go off grid after renting in the city for eight years. So um, what, what was the first having, thing that motivated you to go off grid? Yeah, so it was the ethical responsibility really to future generations and where our energy was coming from and where the water was coming from and um, we wanted to take that responsibility and it's been really freeing we've really enjoyed uh, the journey it's connected us back with nature um, yeah. when it's a really sunny day we've got heaps of power if it's overcast we still do well. We can live a modern lifestyle. We've got everything we need to live here. We're fully off grid or we're fully electric in our system. So we yeah. don't have gas. We don't have a wood fire. Um, but we're comfortable in the house year round. We stay between about 18 to 25, 26 degrees inside. So it's a really nice living environment, but we didn't have the links to coal fire and the emissions there. So we're taking that responsibility and deciding to spend our money where we think it does less harm to the environment. Yep. Yep. Yeah. Awesome. So what was, yeah, like I am I love hemp. It's one of my favorite materials and that's where we want to build our dream house out of one day. Um, yeah. What was the big inspiration by hemp? Like how did you find out about hemp and decide to go down that path? Yeah. Um. I don't even know how I started looking into building materials, to be honest, because it was never in my plan to build a house. Um, or that was when I started looking into building materials. I found out about passive house design and some of their principles about you can build a house that doesn't need heating and cooling and it stays between 20 and 25 degrees year round. And this was tested over in Germany that gets much bigger extremes in climate than what we do. And that just blew me away and it came, made me really motivated to understand better the materials use, used in building. And then I also, down that rabbit hole that I went, came across lecturers that were talking about how there's a big focus on energy efficient appliances in the house, but the amount of energy and emissions that we release from um, appliances are very minuscule compared to the emissions that go into actually building and creating the house. Yeah. So that whole life cycle of emissions in the house, um, if we're using plastic seals and insulation that requires really high intensity energy going into their creation, then it's going to be, it's going to take you 
15, 20 years just to go and get to a place where you're level with the amount of energy that went into it. So that was where my focus came on natural materials that use less emissions and the hemp queen as it cures actually captures carbon and takes it out of the atmosphere to solidify. So um, I guess that's how we sort of snowboard into hemp queen. And once I came across it, I just couldn't find a, any other product that had as many yep. benefits as hemp queen does. Totally. Yeah. I, I was the same. I literally was like, do, I do this for a living and I suppose, you know, the last decade I've taught people, I designed a lot of solar systems is basically what my focus has been really the last decade and doing all the solar designs. And I've always been in a unique situation where I've been involved. Most people call me, they're saying, hey, look, Mike, we're looking at buying this block of land. We need to work out what's going to cost to power it. Great. We work all that out. Then I'm involved from all the whole way through. So I've been involved in a lot of builds and I get to see how the builds work, how the customer works and designs their house. And then at the end of it, I get to see how energy efficient the homes are because we put the solar system in, we monitor all the energy. And I've been really lucky over the years to get to see like lots of hemp houses, straw bale. Uh, I'm actually, we've actually had a few um, like they're like Dixon homes, sort of um, GJ Gardner type homes, just yeah. metric on, just, you know, run of the mill built houses. And the customers have done a few things with insulation. I'm actually really impressed with some of those that have um, how energy efficient they are um, from that point of view. So, but it's the same thing for me, like when I looked at hemp, I, I just couldn't find, uh, and even with the passive house design, I really don't think you need your house passive um, house certified when you build with hemp because just by default, the way it's manufactured and built, um, yeah, it's like that. That's it. In the end, we didn't end up fully designing to the passive house principles or standard. Um, it's ended up being more solar passive design. So just making sure that we orientated the house towards we were lucky we're on a big block here so we orientated it towards the north made sure we had cross flow ventilation with the way that we placed the windows and just a few considerations like that so yeah we're not fully passive house but just being mindful of the site and then using the hempcrete and the insulation it gives us a very comfortable house to live in Um, the other thing that I love about hemp is that it's so quickly, it grows really quickly. So it only, it only takes three months to grow a field of hemp, whereas timber, which is another great building material, you know, it can take 50 years or more to grow a tree that you yeah. need to cut down to use. No. Um, so that's... It doesn't need any pesticides to grow. Um, from what we've heard, it's even fairly with tough. Like, um, so it doesn't. The rainfall can vary, and it it will still produce a decent crop. So, yep, no, totally. Yeah. So, um, yeah, it's what's a weed technically. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> so, um, so you guys are pretty hands on. Like, you've got two dwellings there. You've got your, your granny flat, and you've got your house. Um, so you guys are pretty hands on. So tell us, tell us a bit about the process and being involved building with hemp. Yeah. Well, that was another thing we liked was that we actually, because we don't have building backgrounds, but we liked that we could actually be involved in the build of these houses. Um, so you put up formwork on either side. It's a t standard timber framework house. Um, and you put up formwork, which is these blackboards on either side of the timber framework. It ends up having about a, we've got ours at a 200 mil gap. Uh, and then you fill the hemp mixture in into the in between the boards. Um, so you use a mortar mixer. You add hemp, uh, lime, some sand, and water into a big mixer. It's sort of like a slurry. It's it's not. How would you describe it? it it's almost like soil, I guess, in texture, like it's loose. It's not wet like concrete. Um, and you just lightly tap it down when you put it in between the formwork and you go around your timber frame. So it helps protect your timber frame um, over the long term because rodents and insects and termites can't get to it as easily. Uh, and after about 
12 to 24 hours, you can take off this formwork and you just keep, you make your way around the house, really. Yeah, awesome. And so you guys, by the looks, so just um, you chose to not render the inside of the house and just left it natural? Yeah, so we we just fell in love with the marbled look of the hemp queen. Um, as you go, you sort of, you can, it tells a bit of a story. Um, so we have rendered it in sections of their house. So the kids' bedrooms, for instance, we have done a clay render on their bedrooms. Um, only because leaving it non-rendered on the inside, it is a soft wall. So yeah. in, if a kid got really frustrated <laughs> or they're a bit rough on the walls. So in the living dining areas in our bedroom, we've left it exposed. Uh, but, yeah, just in the kids' bedrooms, we've put a render in just to make it a bit tougher for them. Awesome. Yeah, so, um, yeah, it, it's, it's a great finish. Be, uh, yeah, be hard choice for me of whether what to render it or leave it. <laughs> so yeah. both look amazing. And the render looks beautiful too. The render's probably, it's a lot smoother. You know, you don't get the lines. Um, yeah. They both have beautiful aspects. That awesome. Awesome. Cool. So tell us a bit about, um, so one of the things I see a lot on, on Facebook and these days is people want to see like a modern off-grid home. And I know that, you know, I get an email this week from someone saying, you know, I've had 40 years of experience off-grid. You don't, you couldn't teach me anything. And, um, I sort of think that a lot of people that have lived off-grid for a very long time probably don't realize how much things have changed. And I see a lot of people on Facebook getting advice from people that have been doing it for a long time. And, you know, even 2017 for us as a business, we were designing systems with telling people go gas cooking, gas hot water. Uh, with these days, everything's electric, go all electric. The technology's changed so much. So tell us a bit about the technology you use in your house, um, like your ovens and, and your cooking, and tell us a bit about your solar system. Yeah, definitely. So here at the main house, we've got a 10.8 kilowatts of solar panels on the roof. They're north facing. And we've got a 7.5 kilowatt inverter. This inverter can couple with the energy that we're gaining from our solar panels. And then that gives us an overdrive up to 18 kilowatts of power that we can draw on at one time, which is yep. way more than what we ever need. Uh, but so, it's really nice to, if I am, if I've gone and put ovens on and I've got the dishwasher running and I'm also wanting to use multiple stovetops, I've got that power. It's not for a long time. I can't continually use 18 kilowatts or I'm going to run out of power. But it, it gives me that ability to not worry about yeah. how many appliances are on too much. Totally. Yeah. And then we've got 24 kilowatts of batteries, which sees us through the cloudy, more overcast days. Um, we are fully electric here, as I said earlier. So we've got a, um, words just left my mind. It's induction cooktop? Induction cooking. Yes. Sorry about that. <laughs> I had inverters stuck in my head just going through. <laughs> Easy to do, mate. There's lots of I's and N's and. It it is. Um, so the induction cooking is fantastic. Um, we've really enjoyed using it. We've also got Smeg ovens. So we chose to get the Smeg ovens because they've got a really good thermal seal on them. Yep. So they can heat up the oven and then it maintains its temperature a little bit better. Yeah. So it was, is it one of those ones that's got the, um, I think it's called pyrolific where they can... Yep. It's one of those ones, yeah, same as that. Because what, what inside those, they've got ceramic coating inside them. Yeah. And, and that's what ideally, and that's we, we did the same thing with ours. We had a melee one, but because the ceramic gets hot and holds the heat and therefore it doesn't come on and off so much. Yeah. Makes so it more we, energy efficient. Yeah, we've looked for energy efficient appliances where we can, just so that we didn't have to get a bigger solar system. Because anytime we're adding more appliances or... If they weren't as efficient, it just meant that we'd have to have more energy yeah. to keep them running. Um, so energy efficiency was important to us. But then on the opposite side, because we weren't going to put in an air conditioner, and above me, you can't see it, but we did end up putting in a small air conditioner. Just for the days when it's we get 45 degrees out here yeah. occasionally. 
it means we can put the aircon on because those days are very sunny. We've got a lot, a lot of energy there. So it's a change in mind frame sometimes of going, well, when it's really sunny, if we're not using the energy, then it, it's, you know, the batteries aren't working, the solar panels aren't working. So if we can make our house slightly more comfortable on those really hot days, then it doesn't hurt to have it. No, totally. So, you know, how would then, like, you know, that's sort of working with the seasons, you know, and seasonality, like how does that affect your life, that seasonality? Yeah. Well, in summer, we're almost a, always a boom of energy here. Um, so things just like that with the air conditioner. I, I'm also very free. We've got two young children and they're, they were both in reusable nappies last summer. Yep. So I was doing more washing than I've ever done before. <laughs> I remember those days. <laughs> um, and we were in between. We were still living at the cottage at that time, but we'd bought the dryer and I ended up putting it down at the work site at the main house because it had enough power to run the dryer. And I was bringing loads of washing down because I was like, the solar panels were up, it was all working, but no one was using the power. And I was like, yeah. I don't have time to hang these nappies out. <laughs> <laughs> so that in summer you go, we can use it. And again, never the plan to have a dryer until I experienced two kids yep. and yep. washing and not having time. Uh, totally. Um, but in winter, it's about being more mindful. Most of the time, again, we're pretty good on energy here. But if you are overcast days, just it's about being flexible with what you do. So if I was planning on doing something that required a lot of power, maybe I just wait and I do that a day later in the week if it's predicted to be a bit sunnier. Because yep. if I – you can't just forget about the weather. Because the power can run out at a certain point if the weather's poor. So it's just, and your days are shorter in winter too. So yep. there's just not as many hours to collect light. Um, yeah, and it's totally. coincided well with the little kids too, with them wanting to eat dinner earlier. So in winter, uh, just trying to do the cooking while we've still got that solar charge. So I'm not yeah. draining the batteries. Yeah, do as much from panels as possible. Yeah, definitely. Awesome. And so how do you guys do your hot water there? Yeah, so uh, I like – we've got a little hot pump or oh, a heat pump. Heat pump. Yeah. Okay. So that was one of – I'm glad you mentioned that because up in the cottage we went with solar – a solar hot water system because yeah, okay. I didn't yep. know about heat pumps. Yep. And, you know, the solar hot water system's good, but you do need to boost it with your – electricity in winter so in yep. summer we've got plenty of hot water but the solar system on our hot water up at the cottage just doesn't do enough to keep it hot in winter when you're having to do a lot of hot nappy washes yeah that totally um, always comes back to nappies with me at the moment <laughs> <laughs> um, so i'm sure for somebody living a normal life and needing a normal amount of showers it would be enough hot water uh look i'm going to tell you mate it doesn't get any less because they just get more clothes changing during the day and they mess more things up. And so you still wash just as much. <laughs> yeah. oh, I'll just start worshipping the <laughs> washing machine. Yeah, no, totally. Um, so, yeah, so the heat pump down here has worked really, really well. We've always got hot water now this winter, which has been so awesome. nice. And so do you have, is that like on a timer or something that only works at a daytime or you just let it do its thing? At the moment, we've been letting it do its thing and we haven't yep. had too much of an issue. We are finding that overnight, we've had really clear days. It's been a really nice winter in terms of sunlight here this year. Yeah. But I think we will, we should put it on a timer just to work during the day yep. over winter. Um, but yeah, we haven't gotten around to that yet. Yeah, it you know, depends. On, oh, a lot of the heat pumps actually yeah. do have inside. So yours has actually got one built with it. So it comes with a programming on it. Oh, I haven't maybe looked at it closely, <laughs> to be honest. Just check before you go by any time. Me out some, there. some of them do actually have that already built in, which is great. Which um, And that, that's, you know, these days with the smarts and everything, which is great. Um, a, a friend of mine the other day, 
it's one of those things people say, oh, you don't need a dryer off grid and don't want to use it. But, you know, for us in winter, it's just time getting the kids' clothes done and dusting. It's so many washing loads to do. So, like, the dryer just speeds things up so much faster and uh, and just um, makes it happen, you know. So uh, we, we, we were the same. We thought we'd never get a dryer and then had children. And then because, yeah, it's like um, – our first house, when we took it off grid in Sydney, we had a three kilowatt inverter, which is the same size as your cottage um, that you've got in your cottage there. So, and mate, yeah, like literally, we learned so much from that there and having a kid and getting a dryer. And we definitely did our next system a bit bigger. <laughs> yeah, definitely. Like my first, my daughter, Thea, we were in the cottage when we had her, and I did 18 months of nappies with no dryer. Yeah. And I think with one kid. <laughs> It's more work. I think in hindsight, if I'd had a dryer, it would have been awesome. You yep. can do it. But with two kids, no. Yep. <laughs> I needed a dryer. Nah, <laughs> you just totally. don't have enough time. Yeah. Yeah, that, that's what it is. So um, cool. So would, t- tell us a bit about the um, the little system that you got up at the shed, uh, the, at the cottage. So tell us a bit about yeah. that place. So the cottage has 4.95 kilowatts of solar panels on the roof. Um, it's probably a bit more because... The roof up there is westerly facing. Um, And we've got a direct coupled, um, direct coupling there with an inverter that's three kilowatts and 12 kilowatts of batteries. So the system up there is quite different to what we've got in the main house. It's a lot smaller. Uh, We can't use the solar panels and the battery panels to increase our energy output at all. But three kilowatts is quite nice. It really means you have to slow down a little bit with your life. You can't have the kettle and the toaster and an oven going at the same time. So it just, which is nice in some ways, just to go, I'm cooking the fried eggs. and. (laughs) (laughs) But some mornings you wish you could have the coffee at the same time. Yeah, I, I remember those days. When when we were living in Sydney, we went off grid for the first time. Like, um, I used to little, use a little turbo oven and I used yeah. to cook everything in the turbo oven, like the eggs, the bacon, you know, my tomatoes and do everything. And I had a bit of a system where I'd normally turn the kettle on first mm-hmm. and then I'd go down the back to get the eggs. Then I'd come back, crack the eggs, get the, all that sort of stuff done in the turbo oven. The kettle was off. The turbo oven was running. When the turbo oven was almost finished, I put the toaster down, turned the turbo oven off, and it would just worked. And then literally that would be done, everything in the dishwasher. Dishwasher then goes on, and then an hour later downstairs, wash machine, dryer. <laughs> yeah, yeah. You get this little routine going, don't you? <laughs> yeah. So um, it, it's, funny. It's, it's funny that um, for me, like now, one of the biggest things for me, like my wife's really struggled to get me to do, you know, clean and washing and stuff like that. But these days I'm like, right sun's cranking and i run around put everything on to use all the excess solar up and um and use all the excess power and it's like my intention is not to help with the washing i'm like we got loads of power i want to use it (laughs) yeah (laughs) you do uh, sometimes like when you're watching your batteries you're like oh they're full ah have to find some way to go and use some more energy and it's a real (laughs) change of mind (laughs) no it is it is it is so, um, yeah, so it's a pretty you say like similar experience that we had where we got to do our, you know, you get to live in your cottage and we did a house in Sydney. Then we moved to another house and did another whole house. And I've actually done this house twice um, yeah. with the solar set up. So because I, we literally, we did it all. We made the house self-sufficient and then we brought an electric car. And that was like, okay, I want to be self-sufficient for energy now. And so we doubled the size of the system, um, which is pretty crazy. Um, so, yeah. Yeah, that's so, exciting. We've left an electrical port outside where our carport is so that hopefully when we get our electric car, <laughs> not too much work just to plug it in because we're really uh, excited to go down that way too. Yeah, no. And, it look, yeah, it's uh, – we actually have a customer who's off-grid. He has a um, 5 kVA inverter um, and they have, like, lead-acid batteries. So, like, you know, probably not the best batteries mm-hmm. for a Tesla – and they do 35 kilometers a day. So they literally take the kids to school. They come home. By the time they're home, their batteries are full. They plug in their car. They put enough range in to go get the kids again that afternoon and just do what they do, you know. So And it's a really small little system. So, um, And it just comes down to working with nature and, and yeah, just, yeah, 
understanding your solace and when to plug things and when not to, you know? So Yeah, definitely. Yeah. So um yeah, cool. and tell us a bit. So you've got a um you've got a business that you've you've started since you had kids and um tell us a bit about what you do with your business. Yeah, so um we've got the simple patch natural well being, which is all to do with uh healthy skin products really. It's we grow a whole lot of organic botanicals here on the farm and then I infuse them and I create tinctures uh, that are really healing and restorative using simple but powerful um, natural whole ingredients. So just like with whole foods, when you're eating, you want to be eating and putting the best things into your body and then you find that you feel best and your body functions really well. It's the same with your skin when you use really good natural products on your skin your skin feels better um so that's that was a little bit of a hobby of mine that I had while I was in Sydney and I was suffering from a lot of skin issues yep. I got into this naturopathy sort of um skincare products that I was using and making for myself and I went hey if these are working really well for me maybe I should share that with my local community so that's what I've been doing for the last couple of years while I've been on maternity leave and yeah, it's just a little passion project. Awesome. That sounds good. So with, with going off grid, like um, if you were to do it again, was there anything, is there any advice you'd give anyone or something that you'd do different next time? Um, I think it would have probably mainly, we would have gotten slightly bigger than the three kilowatt inverter at the cottage. The first one, yeah. <laughs> yeah, I think. We went small because we thought long term we'd have that as my husband's workshop so it wouldn't need too much power up there and it wouldn't be used very regularly. Yep. Um, and then we ended up living in it for a year and a half. <laughs> and <laughs> it was fantastic. I loved it. It was a huge upgrade from the tent that we were living in when we first moved in. But <laughs> after a while I started going, I do wish I could didn't have to plan or wait so long to be able to cook a whole meal. Like I wish I could cook my rice while I was cooking my curry and just little yep. things like that. You can definitely live off a three kilowatt inverter, but with a modern lifestyle or it's just a little bit easier if you've got a bit of a bigger system. Yeah, no, definitely, definitely. So, um, yeah, so do you have a thermo mix? I do now. I didn't at the time. <laughs> awesome they're, they're pretty good aren't they yeah oh, they're amazing yeah I used one for work a lot um a few years ago and I was just getting frustrated at my blenders not being as powerful as the thermomixes yeah yeah our um our family story is a bit different I had to convince my wife to get one yeah so it wasn't the other way around normally it's the wives trying to convince the husbands I was like we're getting one of these she's like no we're not spending two and a half thousand dollars on a kitchen appliance I'm like yes we are yeah. <laughs> energy efficient <laughs> And I'll cook you dinners. So yeah, I was a little. I wish my husband said that. <laughs> <laughs> Didn't last long. Didn't last long. <laughs> it never does. So she got about three or four months out of me, and I was pretty excited about it. And um, yeah, I mean, there's more when we moved. It's like yeah. So yeah. Yeah. But yeah, it didn't last. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> no. um, yeah, I just my husband's very slow. I don't think it would last. <laughs> Yeah, okay. Um, but then, yeah, we're also looking at renting out or oh, airbnb the cottage because we feel really sad. We made it into this beautiful home that we were loving. And now that we're in the main house, it's just sitting up there not getting used. So we'd love for other people to be able to come and experience living in a passive, solar passive designed house and living in a hempcrete and just experience yeah, experience that different feel and how comfortable it can be over winter without any heating or cooling. Yeah. Um, as well as they can just enjoy the tranquility. It's quite a peaceful place up here. Yep. No, totally. Yeah, that's um my yeah, I'm gonna make I'm gonna build a community. Uh, is my intention is to build a community. I call it my caravan park because I, I don't really have a better name for it. But my my whole idea was to build like one row full of hemp houses and one full of straw bar houses 
you know, you have some rammed earth houses, mud brick houses, and all these different sustainable building materials. So people can come and extend an experience because once it is like, to me, hemp's a drug, and we know that is a drug in another mm-hmm. sense, but it is one of those you go and you live in a hemp house and you experience it, it's hard to do anything else. Yeah. Um, they're, they're pretty amazing to stay in. So yeah. it's so amazing. And I think coming back to that point that you made earlier about people have these preconceived ideas of what it's like to live off grid and we've had friends and people come here and family and their concept of what off grid was doesn't match with what our home looks like and the way that we live yeah so off grid doesn't mean that you have to give up all of your modern cons anymore you can live quite comfortably off grid yeah now it's definitely changed the last few years with the technology and everything being so energy efficient and battery technology is one of the biggest game changers um, because yeah, it's you're limited by budget these days, which is um, yeah, that's pretty much it. If you've got the money, you can do whatever you want. Yeah, and they take up the cabinets outside of just amazed. Some of the builders we have that worked on our house were also off grid, yep. and they were asking us where our batteries were, and we we're like, just they're just there in that cabinet, and they're like, no, like where's the room? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> so they were quite jealous. Yeah. Yeah, no, definitely. Space is definitely something that's changed with battery technology. So, um, yeah. you know, it's pretty exciting. So, And the, the other really good thing as well with battery technology these days is you can also always buy and keep adding to them, um, yeah. where a lot with the lead acid technology, you couldn't do that. So, um, yeah, it's just, and that's going to be game changing because like from a, I know from us, we had a lot of customers that most of our customers will buy a tin shed, put the tin shed up, live in the tin shed while the main house gets built. And sometimes they just don't have the budget, so they might put, you know, eight kilowatt hours of battery storage in, and then yeah. as the house comes along and more things happen, they just keep adding batteries, and it's and it's really easy to add a battery. So um, literally, most of our customers, I just say pick it up, they take it home, they plug it in, we log in, re- reprogram it, good to go. <laughs> yeah, yeah, we actually had to do that when we were building our main house because we had a huge extension cable running from our cottage down to the main house for the builders to have electricity down here. Yeah. And they were bringing their toasty presses for lunch. (laughs) So come 12 (laughs) o'clock. But they were also on the overcast days because they did a lot of the build during winter. Yeah. We were going, why have we got, I haven't used that much energy today. Why is our battery so low? And it was just the builders were using so much more than we expected. Yeah. Yeah, totally. So uh, it's great you get to build your house from your solar system, you know. So yeah, yeah, it's definitely. one of the normally biggest priorities. Customers that like to ask, like, shed goes in, Mike. You have to have power the next day because when the power goes up, we start building the house. So yeah, yeah it's good. It's good. So um, awesome. And so yeah, so with your house, I know there's a um, we talk about that sitting between twenty and twenty five degrees. Um, so this winter, I saw there's a, a picture. I'll find it. Here we go. We've got this picture here. Um, so tell us a bit about this. This is your, your indoor temperature. Outdoor was 13 degrees and indoor was 23. Yeah. Yeah. So most days we get into the mid to low 20s. Um, yeah, that was just a – I quickly took a s- snapshot. But um, I love this weather similar. station. I tell everyone to buy one. <laughs> oh, it's been so interesting. I love not just being able to feel how warm it is inside, but being able to go, <laughs> look, it gives us a bit of warning too when we go to go outside. And <laughs> yeah, yeah. Um, it's very cold. No, May totally. was really cold for us here. So at night, like even eight o'clock at night, it was getting down to five or seven degrees outside. And um, we were still a comfy 21, 22 inside. So. Yeah, with no fireplace or no heating? No, no fireplace, no heating. Um, overnight on those nights when it was already five degrees outside at eight o'clock, then we were, we were getting down. The coldest we got was about 17 and a half degrees. Awesome. So that's just jumper weather. Or you're in bed at those times in the morning anyway. By the time <laughs> the sun came up we started warming up and yep and yeah. well the other, other things as well with you see on this gauge here that really stands out is um people don't really realize with a passive house is the humidity that it removes which humidity equals mold so if you yep. got heap of humidity in your house and you can see here in this 
outside's 80% humidity and your inside's 60%, um, which is great. Yeah, definitely. Another reason why we really liked the hemp queen was because it is vapor permeable. So, yeah, it doesn't build up humidity inside. It lets the humidity out, like in our bathrooms and areas like that. So we shouldn't go and get any mold ever growing behind our gyprock walls that we have got in a few yep. areas. because that. So do you have a few gyprock walls? We do. We've got internal gyprock walls. So we would have loved for them to be earthen walls. But budget restraints and yep. <laughs> it's it's got a beauty to it as well. A gyprock's not the worst, but... Everything comes down to give and take, I think we found. Yep. Um, yeah. But, yeah, we're really happy with it. It's a good mix. Oh, awesome. So in, was the house, was it that much more expensive? Like, do, you under, do you know how much more expensive it was to build with hemp compared to a traditional build if you went down that path? Did you price that up at all? It's a question we get asked a lot. Um, and we even asked our builder because we got to a point where we're like, we'd love to be able to answer this. Like, <laughs> how much would it be? <laughs> and our builder wasn't even able to go and give us a price. So unfortunately, I can't answer that very well. But I think, and a lot of it comes down to also how much you can help and reduce the labour a lot. Because as we were saying, you can be really involved with, they're putting up of the hempcrete walls yeah and you can get we put on a few weekends where all family and friends and people that were interested came and helped us build some of our walls so it was a really yeah. nice community feel and that just meant the builders came the next week and they'd be like oh this part of the house is done move on yeah. no, totally. and then that's yeah. what i love about you know like i'm not encouraging earth ships <laughs> yeah. um I'll use Earthships as an example because it's probably the one that's done this the most successful is people pay to go spend 10 days on an Earthship build and, you know, this house gets built with so much love and so much, you know, I've done a few builds myself. I've done hemp workshops, straw bale. I've done Earthship workshops and I'm still friends with so many people that I, I spent the weekends with and the weeks with learning how to build this stuff and doing it all and we all keep in touch and, you know, I think about traditional build we've done three traditional build houses and the builders themselves all hate each other you know by the end of most builds you know the apprentice didn't turn up and you know they don't get along that sort of stuff and i think yeah. there's something special about building out of natural materials it does bring people together and and um it's a whole different feel and vibe to the house when it's completed compared to a traditional build my in my opinion and my experience you know so definitely yeah. i think that was something that was in my back of my mind that inspired me too was we visited malaysia uh, you know, seven years ago now. And we saw one of their traditional towns and we were walked through it by one of the elders in the area and he was telling us about how they used to build their houses and, like, when they'd have a new couple that got married, all the men in the village would go and harvest the wood and they'd go and build them a new house. And there was just something so beautiful about building that house with your community that I really liked. And I think that's – it was a – Something in my back of my head that really helped me, like, grew my passion for hempcrete even more, that yeah. we could do it with community. No, and totally. I was pregnant in both of our hempcrete builds and spent <laughs> most of my days hempcreting, so anyone can do it. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. I terrified our builder on some of the planks that I was on as it got up towards the roof. <laughs> <laughs> No, Tony, I remember doing my mother-in-law's, like everyone was involved, like my mother and father, they're in the 70s and they loved it. You know, it was just a real, everyone had fun and, you know, we, yeah. it took us 12 months to build the room. It wasn't a huge room. It was about four and a half square meters, four and a half meters each way. Yeah. So, yeah, close to 18 square meters, the whole room. And, um, but yeah, it took, took me four days, but it took me a whole year to do it um, just because I was actually going to Port Macquarie because it was in, in, in Roland's Plains, the back of Port Macquarie there. Yeah, nice. So I drove down, did one day, you know, and by the time I got there, set up, yep. cleaned up, got out of there. I, yeah, so my weekends were gone. <laughs> so, um, but they disappear the too fast. Oh, totally. So, yeah, especially when you're hemping all weekend. So, yeah. You know, so, um, but, yeah. yeah, we did that. We, we lime rendered the end of it and, um, yeah, finished it with a lime coating, which is pretty cool. Yeah, so. yeah awesome. Nice. So, um, so was there any other materials that you did look at besides hemp? Um, I think our architect that we, or building designer that we ended up using to help us do all the technical drawings and 
as she gave us a lot of recommendations on passive house design and or solar passive house design. Um, she also had a big love for hemp and hempcrete and she'd built using it a lot. So I think we were pretty strong. We'd probably done about a year and a half, two years research and we'd worked on a few workshops building hempcrete homes and yeah. I think we were just taken. Yeah. Yeah. Well, well once early on we considered other options, but then, yeah. 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 Well, once you work with hemp and understand it and you look at, you know, like in theory, you can grow your house on your own paddock in 16 weeks, um, yeah. you know, so yeah, once you really understand the properties and what people don't really realize is how energy efficient homes become when you build them with that, that passive house design. And, and you know, I, I've done my passive house designers course and I looked at, and one of the things for me, I looked at all the stuff that can go wrong with the passive house design and I was just like, just build with hemp, <laughs> you know, yeah. the builders aren't going to drill holes in all your airtight layer and all this sort of stuff. And they're not going to, you know, all the tape they have to use to seal the holes and stuff. I just looked at it all and I was like, after doing the course, I'm like, yeah, I'm just going to build with hemp. <laughs> you know, yeah, like, yeah. yeah you just, it's really hard to beat. Um, yeah, when you really understand how it all goes together and how it all works. So, yeah, yeah. definitely. Um, and, and so, with your roof with insulation, do you guys, did you just do a tin roof with just standard insulation? How'd you go about that? Yeah, so we've got a zinc loom roof. Um, we, I did want to use, I'd read or heard about like using hempcrete, but without the binder in it. Yeah. And that it can work as insulation. But um, it was a bit more unknown. And I think our builder, we'd pushed him with just building with hemp and he'd been really on board with that. But I don't think anyone else except for me was <laughs> too keen to continue experimenting. So how did he find it after his first build with hemp? Like, do you think he'd go out and do another one? He's doing another one. Awesome. So I think he ended up really enjoying it. Oh, yeah. It was being the first build, definitely learnings taken. Yeah. Um, but yeah, they enjoyed working on it. No, awesome. Yeah. So um, no, it's, it, it is. It's one of those. You know, I actually um, I sold my pan mixer because I had all the equipment to do all the yeah. stuff. That we're doing. We had a, we've we've done a few little projects, and um, when I was selling it, a few people that just wanted to buy it to do something stupid with it, and I was glad the guy that brought my pan mixer up. He was a builder, and he's like, Mike, I want to buy this. He brought my extra hemp and. I gave him a heap of advice and he was wanting to learn how to do it so he can actually go build. And he, he lives on a community. Yeah, that's terrific. He was pretty excited about understanding and learning about it so he could help the community and do more hemp builds in the community, which is great. So, um, yeah, it's good to say yeah. it's gone to a hemp family. <laughs> that's awesome. We're going to use our leftover hemp. We've got a little bit of hemp and binder left over and we're going to build our chickens a little bit of a better house. Nice. <laughs> so they're going to have a little hemp <laughs> <creep> poop. <laughs> look after the ladies i look forward to doing that so um maybe you could run a workshop down there with the um yeah, yeah get more people yeah i think that. we're thinking about that it's all all up here at the moment but we'll definitely let people know when we're looking to build it because it would be great um, to have people come and mate, learn how to up there. I'll, um, yeah I've, I've done plenty of heavy experience but you know I'll, I'll still turn up i love it so yeah it's good oh so. it's addictive like i want to help other people build their hemp houses it's yep. just you get into a little zen just tapping away. It's not heavy or hard work. Yep. Yep. No, it's definitely so awesome. So, all right, cool. Yeah. Well, mate, thank you. I really appreciate you coming on here. And um, we're going to put all Ashley's links and stuff down in the description. And uh, if you want to have a chat with Ashley, ask any questions, you can just sign up to the Off Grid Tribe podcast. And uh, it's interactive in there. You're going to have a conversation, have a chat with Ashley and ask any more questions. And, um, yeah, if you want to go along and stay at Ashley's house and check it out and or come to one of the workshops, it'd be great. Yeah. Awesome. Thanks for talking. All right, mate. Thank you. We'll see you next see time. Ya. We hope you enjoyed this episode and found this content inspiring and informative. Make sure to subscribe to stay updated. Drop your comments below. And don't forget to like this content and share it around. Head to theoffgridtribe.com to keep the conversation going. Together, let's embrace the power of sustainable living.